It's about friggin' time. What's up, YouTube? Graver here, and today we have a review, and I have finally gotten my hands on this thing. And what this thing is, if you have not read the title, which I'd be kind of surprised if you had it, but this is the X-Shot Chaos Orbit, one of two current Chaos Blasters that X-Shot has put out, the other being the Meteor, which is a pistol a la the Kronos. I uh, do not have one of those just yet. I was lucky I found this thing at one of my local Burlington's. It was the last one hidden behind the shelf, but damn it, I found it and I got it. So, and I've wanted this thing since before APOC. So it shows you how long I've been wanting to get my hands on this thing. Uh, we're going to do our usual review. Going to do a, go over the aesthetics, how it works. Uh, maybe a little firing demonstration. Throw it on the bench, open it up see what we got inside of it, and then I will give you my final thoughts on it. So, getting to it, this is the standard uh, black and blue configuration. There is a Meteor at Dollar General. I'm not sure if the Orbit is there as well. I have not been able to actually look, uh, but the Meteor sold at Dollar General happens to actually be blue and white instead of blue and black. Um believing that the meteor if sold there would kind of follow or not the meteor the orbit would follow suit but this is the standard one and honestly i like the black and blue better than black and white um the aesthetics for this thing are really cool it has a very very nice sci-fi look to it uh, it has a very small uh, attached stock on it you have your sling mount there it has some full rails on the sides here and i say full rails because these are very, very much like the rails that are on the side of the turbo advanced which really aren't sides they're just kind of decorations they just look like uh yeah slides or uh rails wow brain fart okay maybe the month uh didn't help as much as i hoped uh but anywho the only real rail because even back here everything is flush on the side so you would not be able to get anything to stick back there anyway the only real actual rail is this piece up front because you can see it actually has the indentations it's got the notches the only thing is though i don't know what you would actually fit on there because as far as i know x shot doesn't have any actual optics or sights to put on any of their blasters and you'd be hard pressed to kind of get one on here because the front of the rail is blocked by the kind of faux, the little faux site here. So you really wouldn't be able to get anything on. And it also has these ridges, which you can't get anything past. So it'd have to be a snap on thing. So, but it does actually come with a faux site already built into it. And I say built into it because this is actually part of the shell. It's not coming off, so it's there whether you like it or not. Um, or at least until you mod it and just, like, hack it off. But I one thing I will have to say about this thing, the reticle on this, I don't know if you'd be able to see it. I will try my best. If this doesn't work, I apologize. But honestly, that reticle is probably one of the better reticles I've ever seen on a Nerf Blaster Optic. Or a foam blaster optic, sorry, because this isn't nerf. Because <laughs> that's a whole different story. Uh, but much like nerf, you'll see that there is only markings on one side of this blaster. But fear not, because this thing actually comes with a decal sheet. So if you wanted to make this side match this side, you have all of the decals to do it. Or if you want to just go hog wild, you can just sticker the bejesus out of this thing and be done with it. Uh, and honestly, I like the fact that they went with a decal more so than an actual sticker because taking the stickers off of the reflex and the turbo advance and all that stuff because they're the cheap paper stickers is a huge, huge pain in the butt where these should come off a whole lot cleaner. Uh, you may get a little residue from one of them, but that's a lot easier to clean up than sticky paper. So, 
There is also a jam door on this side, which actually will function while you're using the blaster. Um, I know Captain Xavier, when he did his uh, Can I Take a K26, which by the way is an amazing series, did note that if you do have that open while you're using it, it at the right angle, you may wind up knocking out one of your uh, rounds. So it's not really going to be kind of worth it to do it while it's open. But it is a pretty big jam door. So if anything, you would be able to clear a jam very easily out of there. Now, it also has a, as with standard with all of these rival-like blasters, uh, you have the little switch there for your safety. However, um, I think X-Shot needs to get good at it because I can very easily pop my safety open. Um, the, pist the pistol grip on here is very comfortable with the exception of this little, little pain on the butt right here because if you're holding it straight on, that is now digging into your wrist and that is extremely painful. Um, so honestly, you're going to either have to kind of try and knock it into your wrist or just you're going to have to hold the blaster at an angle and just, you know, make sure you don't hit anyone with your elbow while playing with this thing. Now to load it, very actually easy. You have these two orange knobs on each side. You just pull those all the way to the back to bring this yellow piece all the way to the back end of the stock. Basically, all you do is you just put your rival rounds in there or your foam balls, whatever. Push this side of it. This will slide the, uh, I guess, the attachment forward. I honestly really don't know what you would wind up calling this thing, but uh, the ramrod, whatever. But this will slide it forward and it will actually stop wherever your last round lays. So it will actually feed... Well, you'll actually see progression for 12 of your 14 shots that this actually holds. Yes, this thing holds 14 shots. So you're talking about four more shots than the Liberator, two more shots than the Atlas and Hypnos because they use the rival magazines and those cap at 12. So, I mean, you're talking about probably the highest capacity shotgun that is stock for foam balls. So that honestly is a pretty nice thing on it um, the last thing I just wanted to point out is this little orange switch here now I've had this blaster for about a week a week and a half or so and I've been playing with this thing I have not opened this up yet so when we open it up on the bench it's gonna be you know eyes open for everyone but I have no blessed idea what the hell this thing is for I really don't I think it's just to keep you busy while pick while in between rounds or something it, it really serves no purpose it it's not tied to the trigger. It's not tied to the. It's not tied to the the magazine. It's not tied to your pump grip. I really have no idea what the hell it's tied to. So, yeah, there's just switch there. So, quick firing demonstration. You're gonna take it. You're gonna load it up, or you're gonna slide that back first, and you're gonna take your tiny little red uh, spaceship Earths here. And the reason I call these the Spaceship Earths is because the X-Shot rounds are these red rival-like rounds that are loaded with tiny little hexagons. And I looked at it, and the first thing I thought of was Spaceship Earth in Epcot uh, Disney World. So we have cheese balls, we have golf balls, and now we have tiny amusement attractions. <laughs> so, but again, just load it in and... Obviously, gravity fed, it will, it will bring it forward. Now, if you push this side of the release mechanism, it's not going to do anything. It's a one-way release, which is on the left side of the blaster. And see, it stopped, the, stopped where the rounds were. And just like any other uh, blaster shotgun, back, forward, point, and fire now with the liberator there were issues about the old oh how do i reload on the fly well this one actually reloads on the fly very easily all you have to do is slide your thing back top off 
and now you're reloaded or you're cap or you're topped off or you're partially reloaded in this case so yeah oh and one thing i didn't i forgot to point out i'm sorry but this top part of the magazine here is actually molded to actually look like carbon fiber so it looks like there's like three different things on here but I mean, the carbon fiber is just molded plastic. It's not actually carbon fiber, but I just thought that was really freaking neat. So let's go to the bench. We're going to open this bad boy up and see what we got inside of it. Okay, so as always, for sake of time, I have unscrewed everything. And oh my God, does this thing have a ton of screws. Look at this. 22 screws. Now, thankfully, all except for one are the same size. You will have this one that is slightly longer. This goes in the bottom corner. If you ever get lost, the long screw goes here. All the rest of these are the same size. And I apologize for my squeaky chair. So the pump grip comes off very easily. I'm actually very surprised that this is so far back. Um, I figured it'd be a little bit more front or centered on it but no the priming of it is all at the very back of it so there's that so all right let us open this up now hopefully it'll not give us an issue or explode i think i got all the screws nope i missed two so there's actually 25 screws in this thing jeez And I was wrong. The long screw is not the only um, oddball in the pot. The two at the top of the foot of the faux site are short. So the two short go in here and the one long one goes there. So I see no other silver in here. So hopefully we'll be able to get this guy open. Yep, there we go. There we go. This part's already kind of started to want to open got nothing there for you why are you being a pain oh because i missed one in the faux rail 26 26 screws this thing has and only three of them are in and that's another shorty so your two shorties your three shorties are here and your long guy is down there now will you open up for me? Thank you. Make me look bad on camera. Oh, I got everything. I am just trying to make sure this doesn't explode. Oh, you sneaky little prick. All right, so you actually have to take one of these off. There we go. And for a brief second, it was the right way. So... Here are our internals. You have a big chunky front barrel. Um, the spring for this thing, which I knew was gonna be kind of weak anyway. Um, take the jam door off. So you can see how it, like, how it loads up. You have this little thing that goes up in order for you to load the rounds, but does not allow them to get out and also is pretty much your pusher for the magazine uh, you have your lock for this piece which is then aided by oh damn wish I real I wish I had seen how this one went in this is gonna be fun to put back later so you have the front and the release piece for the magazine there uh surprisingly there is a spot for it but i didn't see it pop 
out unless when I go to edit this and I actually see what the hell happened to it. But as far as I can tell, it has a spot for a trigger spring, but it doesn't actually have one. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, here you have the lock that I was so easily able to dismantle, which we're going to be taking that out. I'm going to leave the button, but yeah, there's really no sense in me keeping the lock if I can pop it off at will. Uh, it looks like it is a gear system to prime it, which I'm not surprised. I remember seeing this in Xavier's video, so there's that. But the actual mechanism itself, much kind of like the uh, Kronos is, or much like the Rival Blasters, are all one piece. You can take this off. You have your front piece here your plunger and your spring. Now, Xavier did say this cannot take a K26. Uh, you'd have to be very specific about the diameter of this particular plunger. So you have to make sure it not only fits, but it will actually also still fit in the plunger as well. So, and this is, I guess, the air restrictor. When a round is there, it pushes this in and opens the little fans. And then when it's closed, it closes it up. Which, if this thing supposedly hits around like 100 FPS, it's a good idea to probably keep that in there. Uh, the barrel itself, really nothing special about it. It's just two pieces that slide slide in with each other. So the reason for the actual gear system is as you're priming this back, these gears are moving this forward so that your round will actually drop into position. And then when you pull the prime forward, this is now pushing it back and loading it actually into the spot itself. So since this is a gear thing, you will have to make sure that your the way you set it is actually correct because if the gear is misaligned, it's not gonna load properly and then there's that. So, but I just want to take a look and see what kind of locks we're working with here because it looks like all right found lock number one we're taking out this is your priming lock so we can get rid of that now I am not a fan of priming locks. I never have been. And that is just because if, let's say I was, I did decide to take the AR out of this and I was, and I knew I was out, I wouldn't want to dry fire this in order to actually fire it. So at this point, once that's out and we'll figure this, we'll figure this piece out um, in a minute, which... Yeah, we'll figure that out in a second. So this way you can actually, ah, there it goes. And there's your trigger lock. So when it's here, you can actually pull the trigger back to slowly release your priming handle. And everything goes hunky-dory. So we have those two locks out and let's see. So this is a, well, once it's on the other side, it will actually, it would actually stay up, but it's pretty much just push and pull. The only thing you need to take off to get rid of the trigger lock is that thing. And honestly, this thing is, that thing is so damn weak. I can probably just take it out myself. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this back together. I'm going to actually leave that in there also because I don't want to hold the handle, but I'm going to put this back together. Um, if I run into any hiccups or anything like that, I will definitely let you all know. I'm going to put it together off camera, but I will show it again once it's all re-complete and assembled. So you know I actually did put it together correctly. So be back in a moment. Okay, so I am like 99.9% .9 sure I have everything back in the place it is supposed to go. The don't worry about the gear assembly. This will actually kind of like self-straighten itself out. Um, I think the 
teeth are positioned in such a way that as long as these two pieces are right, when you drop the gear down, you're going to be fine for it. This back piece here, make sure the spring portion is pointing up or out, whichever, because that's where that's going to be going. And regarding the trigger, like I said, ah, crap. Um, since it's actually part of the catch itself, again, even though it was designed to actually have a trigger spring, the catch is actually what returns your uh, spring back to your trigger back to position. So that's it for here. Uh, just going to try and keep this in the right position so that when I put the other side on, I'll be able to get the jam door back in position as well. So I will see you guys in a few moments for my final thoughts, where this is probably going to take me about, I would say, at least another 15 minutes of trying to screw this thing together. Okay, so my final thoughts on this thing. I really like it. Um, for me, it was definitely worth the wait to finally get one of these things. The I'm going to go over what I liked, again, and the dislikes and the cons that I have on this. But honestly, all of the pros really do outweigh the cons on this. So for the pros, this is a very comfortable handle. It's very, very nice. It indexes well. Um, plenty of room in the finger in the in the trigger well uh your hand has plenty of room on this grip definitely the pump grip oh man i i wish i could put this on my liberator uh but alas i think it's got to stay on here but regardless it is still a freaking wonderful 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 front grip um, the styling of this blaster is super sweet. I love the sci-fi aesthetic to it. Even the stock colors I like to it. Um, and the fact that it also has, uh, what is decals rather than paper stickers on it. And it comes with even more. So if you take one off, you can always replace it. The modding potential on this is, I think, pretty well good. Uh, you can definitely do spring swap on it. I would not worry about the gear or stripping that out because... The gear isn't functional to the prime of the blaster. It's functional for the load of the blaster. It just happens to be tied into the priming handle. So I don't foresee if you put a stronger spring in here that it would strip out the that it would strip out the gear. Um, but again, that's just my opinion on it. I haven't actually done it or tested it yet, but that's what I say. Now a few of the downsides to it is one the little stock thing you could have just chopped it off here and i still would have been happy with it i mean again i'm not not that i'd be shouldering it very much because it's not that comfortable of a stock plus it's where you reload everything if you knock this out this would have been such a much more pleasant to hold the gun like this rather than having to hold it almost like this uh the locked sight that does kind of annoy me, but again, it's an easy fix if you want to mod it. You can just, or remove it. It's just literally taking your Dremel and going right along the bottom here. Uh, against, you know, the bottom of the uh, site. And then just lopping it off and it would be a little bit more streamlined. Um, the other thing, now, with the plus of price on this thing's side... Uh, downside is availability. Now, these are available in Burlington, I think Menards, um, a couple of other like places, honest to God, I've never heard of. Uh, these are supposed to be released in Walmart and Target, so hopefully by the time you're watching this video, they may already have been done, but if not, you know, we're, I'm also talking maybe a couple months in the future, not right when this video comes out. Uh, but I was able to find mine at Burlington. I got the last one in the store and it was buried on the X shot shelf uh, or shelves, I should say. Um, other people have had great luck with it. They found like four or five in their local Burlington's or whatever stores that they have. So this isn't a impossible to find blaster, but it's not the easiest one to find, at least until it comes to a major retail chain, in my opinion. But that being said, again, this is also like 16 to $18, depending on where the hell you're getting it from. So it's a super good deal. And if you can get it, honestly, 
get it. That's my opinion on this. So that's going to be it for this video. And thank you all very much for joining us for this video. And as always, if you enjoy this stuff me and Arlene put here on the channel, please throw us a like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Click the little bell icon so you get notified when me and Arlene are doing our silliness. And also, if you know somebody who may enjoy our content here, please feel free to share our videos as well because that also helps us get some exposure here to the YouTube gods and hopefully maybe we'll be a better favorite amongst their algorithms and all. So every little bit always helps. Again, thank you very much for uh, this for joining me for this video. I'll see you guys next time. Later.